sometimes see is the impact of maybe false positives or you know sensitivity issues with fraud. Yeah. I, I literally just had a conversation today with somebody that I knew from one of our competing companies. I mentioned to him that you know one of the things I've really come to learn is that the average fraud solution has a 15% false positive rate. And he started laughing. He says, oh my God, it's so much higher than that. <laughs> and this is somebody who's one of our direct competitors uh, or used to work for the one of the direct competitors. And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to be nice about it because I don't want to scare people. He's like, he goes, I'm betting it's closer to 50%. That means, you know, one in two signals that they're giving you is wrong. It's no different than flipping a coin. Why would you spend the money for a solution at that point? For us, it's paramount. We built it for ourselves for the first 10 years of, of the life cycle of the product. And it had to be accurate because if it was accurate, our clients saw a lift in ROI. If we were wrong, they would see a decrease in ROI. So we paid attention to the numbers very closely. And best way to describe the way accuracy works most fraud detection companies use some type of system of numbers like from zero to 100, and they'll say, hey, it's 70% likely to be fraud. Go ahead and block it. That's strong enough signal to say block that source of traffic. But the mathematical person in me says, what about the other 30% that possibly it could have been a real person? And that's where the false positives lie in. Or you've got solutions in the marketplace that allow you to, to dial in and dial down how much fraud they're getting from re reverse proxies or from spoofing attacks or from whatever. So you can say, hey, I don't want to count this role. doesn't mean you're not counting fraud. It just means you're lowering the role. I want to increase this. Like it just, and that's where the false positive comes. For us, we can't mark something fraud unless we're 100% confident that it's fraud because our clients need to know, should I let this person charge a credit card? Should I let this person fill out a form? Should I let this person log into my system? They need to know right then and there, and it's got to be accurate.